Hi guys, I'm Anissa and I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to share with you a quarterly wrap up of the things that I've been reading over the second quarter. It's a little bit delayed. Um, I would like to apologize for being a little bit inconsistent in the last, I don't know how long, like this year, I feel like I haven't been very consistent with my pop uploading schedule at all as I usually am. Uh, usually I will upload between uh, two to three videos every every week and this one I have some weeks where I publish a lot and like, or upload a, quite a few <laughs> videos and then some weeks where I hardly upload anything um, I also haven't been reading the same amount as I usually do I mean I, my, my reading has been so um, up and down like in terms of how much I was reading um, so I still read quite a lot of books during a month, but that's mostly because I get through a lot of audios and stuff and but I yeah um, I don't think I am really in the same headspace as I've been previous years when I've been doing YouTube videos. But anyway, <laughs> let's get to the books that I've been reading over the past quarter and um show a little bit of my statistics, like yeah. Um, already I've read more books in the second quarter than I did in the first quarter so that way it's better but yeah uh, let's get into the statistics part um, first up I read a total of 45 books in the second quarter like in during during April May and June uh, which equals to a total of 14,355 pages um, I, as usual, read a lot of different genres. Um, my genres uh, are always varies a lot, but I have read a lot more fantasy books this uh, quarter than I did in the previous one, which also can you can probably see on my ratings. But I read eighteen fantasy books. I read six urban fantasy books. Urban fantasy I like to track on its own. I've mentioned that a couple of times, even though it is under the. Um, fantasy genre. I read five mysteries, four science fiction books, two paranormal romance, two historical books and two magical realism. Then I read one contemporary, one thriller and one non-fiction book. Um, also, I've read two rereads uh, in the first two months. No, in, in, in April, May, June. I didn't finish my third one in June, so I finished that in the beginning of July, but I have been consistently reading one reread a month as well. Um, in terms of formatting, uh, as usual, the majority get, I get through is um, audios. I have listened to 22 audios. I have read 10 trade paperbacks, 7 hardcovers books, 4 ebooks, and 2 short story collections, I think. I'm a little uncertain why I haven't uh, a graphic novel in that. I feel like one of them should be a graphic trade as well. Um, in terms of length, I have, as usual, mostly read novels, original novels. I have 37 of those, and I read two novellas, one short story collection, uh, one short story, and two omnibuses, and omnibuses where you have multiple stories in the same book. I didn't complete the whole omnibus, I've read a story in the omnibus twice. Um, then I read two graphic novels, a manga, and I read, read one play. In terms of age group, I also read majority of adult, which is also the norm, but I did read from every age group. I read 30 adult books, 7 YA, 7 middle grade, and 1 kids book. In terms of books per month, uh, if you want to look at how my reading changed. April was good. April and May were really really good considering I had been reading about 12 to 13 books in January, February and March. <laughs> um, but I read 18 books in April and in May but then I fell down again to 12 books in June. The, in terms of publication year I have as usual read from a lot, lots of different years and I have majority obviously being the later years, um, but I read 
two books that was written or published before the 20s, so they were two classics. I had one book that was published in the 30s, I had one book that was published in the 70s, three that were published in the 80s, um, three that were published in the 90s, I had 12 that was published in the 2000s. I've been catching up on a lot of series this year, which you can tell by the amount of books in that. I have read two books from 2010, one from 2011, two from 2012, three from 2013, one from 2015, one from 2016, one from 2017, three from 2018, six from 2019, and then I read three books from 2020. Um, in terms of page length, I read one book that was a little less than 100 pages. I read five books between 100 and 199 pages. I read 10 books between 200 and 299 pages and read 20 books between 300 and 399 pages. I read four, seven books between 400 and 499 pages and, let, and I read two books between 500 and 599 pages. I will, I forgot to write it down. I don't know why I forgot that. But I forgot to write down my average book length. I'm pretty sure my average book length is, has become higher uh, than it was in the first quarter because I read a lot of short books in the first few months. Um, however, I have been reading more average book lengths this time around. So I feel like my average is around 300 something pages. But I will leave um, write down here what the two corresponding numbers was. Um, the longest book that I read in the past quarter was A Stamp from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. So it's actually called A Stamp from the Beginning, A Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America. I think that's the complete title. It was 592 pages long. Then I read, the shortest book that I read was Rebel Heart, which is a novella, I've forgotten the author's name, um, something low, Anna Low maybe? Uh, this is a prequel story to a like middle of a serious kind of book. I read it because I was hard in the title. Um, I didn't like it, <laughs> but it was short. I think it was only like 60 something pages. Um, I'm not sure about that exactly. In terms of the location that I got the books from or the books that I read where I had gotten them from, um, I get through a lot of books from my Storytel, which I got through 19 books. Storytel is an un unlimited service that I pay for a monthly fee for, like Script, and I have unlimited access to everything. They have both ebooks and audiobooks. Um, I mostly use it for audios, but I also have been reading a couple of ebooks from there, but yeah. Um, I also have spent, uh, used the library source quite a bit. I read 10 books that was from the library. So free sources is always good. Then I had four books that was from, that I purchased from Book Depository. Um, six books that pu pu purchased from awesomebooks.com. That's majority of those are my um, Discworld books. Uh, blah, Two of them was published from the Kindle store. Um, one was from Amazon, bought from Amazon. One was published from a used bookstore here in Denmark. And then one was published, was, one was purchased from um, a Danish web shop called Saxo. Then I also have author gender, where I still continue to read the majority <laughs> from women or female authors. I have 33 books that were written by a female. And I have 12 books that were written by a male. And a lot of the males are like um, reoccurring males, men. So mm -hmm. let's get to the shameful bit where I'm talking about the books that I've read from the different countries. Because as usual, like US takes the top spot with 26 books. UK get 14 books, but I did read a couple of mangas which gave me two from Japan, <laughs> one from South Africa, one that was two from Canada. I read Mexico, but it's two from Canada um, because <laughs> Silvia Miranda Garcia is Canadian, Mexican Canadian, um, and I read one from New Zealand. In terms of my serious books, I read 30, 
13 standalone books and 32 books that were part of the series. Of those 32 books, um, nine of them I started a new series and 20 of them were ongoing in a series. I completed one series and I DNF'd two series. So yeah, but at one point I hope that I would just have a lot more like completed series because I'm working so much in series right now that maybe at one point it would be easier for me to finish but <laughs> I've been thinking about doing a video about where I talk about all of the series that I'm currently working on but it's going to have to be in more than one video because I have so many um, I have just been updating my um, series tracker and uh, it doesn't look good <laughs> I, I say that and um, now let's get over to the ratings because I've definitely my ratings was definitely better this time around. Last time I only had two five stars, so already then we are better off. I read two books that were... No, five books that were two stars. I read six books that were three stars. I read one book that was three and a half stars. I read 20 books that were four stars. I read six books that were four and a half stars. And then I read seven books that were five stars. So the quality of what I was reading was definitely... A lot better and my average rating of this quarter has been a 3.86 which is definitely good like it's a bob average for sure and it's closer to my norm I guess I am um, have been thinking about I am going to be telling you all the books that I've been reading over the past quarter and then with a rating and then let you know my top five books of the season of the quarter and uh, you can let me know if you prefer this or not all of the books afterwards because sometimes I think it's nice to see the like the books that I've been reading like get a, a sense of feel oh yeah I read that book this quarter um, I don't know what I'm saying so the first book I read this quarter was Recursion by Blake Crouch this is a science fiction book that was probably that is a standalone. It was uh, part of the Book to Best of Awards nominees. I gave it two stars. Then I read Shape Changer by Jennifer Robinson. This is the first book in the Chronicles of the Shisuli series, and I gave this one four stars. Then I read The Test by Sylvain Novell. This is a novella that was published that was uh, also nominated in the Book to Best of Awards. I gave it five out of five stars. Then I read Rebel Heart by Anna Lowe, and I gave that two stars. Then I read um, a, Re a Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. This is obviously a play. I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read Murder on Sisters Row by Victoria Thompson. This is the, the 13th book in the Gaslight Mystery series. I gave this one four out of five stars. Then I read The Darkest Rising by Susan Cooper. This is the... Second book in the Darkest Rising sequence, I gave this three stars. Then I read Shards of Honor by Lois McMaster Bujol. This is the first book in the Fukushima Kinsaka series. It is a science fiction series and it is and I gave this one four out of five stars. Then I read Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne Jones. This is the first book in the Howl's Moving Castle series. It's a trilogy. And I really loved it. I gave it five stars. Then I read Dead and Gone by Charlene Harris. This is book nine in the Sugi Stackhouse series. And I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read Carpe Joculum by Tara Pratchett. This is the 23rd book in the Discworld series. But it's also, I think, the fifth or sixth book in the uh, Witches sub-series. I gave this book five out of five stars. Then I read, reread, I'm sorry, I have to mention it. Breeze wrote, I reread Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. I gave it four out of five stars. I read, then I get, then I read Sal and Gabby Breaks the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. This is the first book in the Sal and Gabby uh, series. I gave this five out of five stars. Then I read Blameless by uh, Gail Carriker. This is the third book in the Solus, no, Parasol Protectorate series. And I gave this one four and five stars. Then I read You Are Not Alone by uh, Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This I read for the Lala's 
mystery book club thing and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read Sorcery of Thorns by Marjorie Rogerson. This was nominated in the Booktube SFF Awards and I'm in the YA category and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read Gods of Jade and Shadow by Syria Moreno Garcia. And this also was nominated in the Book to Best I've Ever Watched under the fantasy category. I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. It was a standalone, by the way. Then I read Decaffeinated Corpse by Cleo Coyle. This is book 5 of the Coffee House Mystery Series, and I give this one 2 out of 5 stars. Then I read Goth Girl and the Ghost of a Mouse by Chris Riddell. This is a children's book. The first in the series about goth girl and I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read Romanoff by Nadine Brandis. This is the a standalone book and about the Romanoff family. I gave this four out of five stars. Then I reread Frostbite by Rachel Mead. This is the second book in the Vampire Academy series. I gave this book five out of five stars on a reread. I read Deadly Sting by Jennifer Eastep. This is the X book in the Elemental Assassin series and I give this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read uh, The Unspoken Name by A.K. Lockwood. This is the first book in the series and I gave this one 2 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Duchess War by Courtney Milan. Uh, this is the first book in the Brother Sinister series. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Fifth Elephant by Ter Pratchett. This is book 24 of the Discworld series. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read And Then There Were None by, by Agatha Christie. This is a standalone classic mystery. I gave this one 4.5 stars. Then I read French Press by Cleo Coyle. This is book 6 of the Coffee House Mystery series and I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read Slave to Sensation by Nalini Singh. This is the first book in the Side Changeling series, I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, this I gave 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read Full Metal Alchemist Volume 14 by Hiromo Arakawa, I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins, I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. Then I read, then I read Ever After by uh, Kim Harrison, this is book 11 in the Hollow series. I give this one four and a half stars. Then I read, um, then I read Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. This is book four of the Murderbot series. I give this one four out of five stars. Then I read Goldstroke Island by Frances Hardinge. I give this one two out of five stars. Then I read Stamp from the Beginning by, by Ibram X. Kendi. I gave this one 4.5 out of five stars. Then I read The Girl in the Tower by uh, Catherine Arden, I gave this one, this is the second book in the Winter Night Trilogy, I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, this is a standalone book, my favourite of hers, and I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I read Dark Side by Tom Becker, the first book in the Dark Side series, I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Spook's Secret by S Joseph Delaney, the s third book in the Last Apprentices or the Watch Throne Chronicles, I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read Murder on Fifth Avenue by um, Victoria Thompson. This is book 15 of the Gaslight Mystery series. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read Full Metal Alchemist volume 15 by Hiromo Arakawa. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is the first book in the Dread Nation series. I don't know what it's called. It's a duality, I think. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Truth by Tara Pratchett. This is book 25 of the Discworld series. And this is the second book that's set in the Industrial Revolution series. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. <laughs> the Dead in the Family by Shanine Harris. This is the 10th book in the Suki Stackhouse series. I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. And finally I read When He Was Wicked by Julia Quinn. This is book 6 of the Bridgerton series, I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. So a little bit later, I had to wait around for my um, battery to charge. <laughs> so, um, but I still need to talk about my 5 favorite books of the quarter. Coming in as number 5 is Carpe Joglum by Sarah Pratchett. This is the 23rd book in the Discworld series and it's one of those that follows the witches as I've said before. 
Um, Terry Pratchett is one of my absolute favorite authors um, and I enjoy all of his books but I don't give all of them five stars. I think there's quite a bit between them but I do know, I always know that I will enjoy whatever I read by him but this one was definitely a great one. I really enjoy um, The Three Riches and then we were also introduced to Agnes in this one who is a new witch that hasn't had a lot of things to say before um, and it was really nice and it was sort of a blend into like the vampire fantasy genre and um, it was really fun. It's my favorite Discworld of the year so far. Coming in as number four on my list is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the first book in a middle grade series. I knew a lot of people really enjoyed this book but I didn't know how I would feel about it but when I picked it up from the beginning and until the end I was just really really happy while I was reading it. I was feeling content. It was just like the thing that I was needed at the time but it was also just a really well told story and I understand why it's a classic and I'm definitely looking forward to reading on in Dariana Wynne Jones's um, collection of books because she's written quite a lot of it. I will start out by trying to finish the House Moon Castle series soon. Um, coming in as number three on my list is The Library of Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. Scott Hawkins. This is a standalone book that I read on my Kindle. I can safely say that this is the weirdest book almost I'd say the weirdest book that I've ever read. I have n read nothing like it before. It was such a weird thing because I started reading it and had no clue what was going on and I kept being in that state for like the majority of the book and it was some people won't like that and sometimes I hate it but in this case I think it was just told so well and it told in such an interesting way that I was just hooked and I wanted to know how this was all gonna end up and and then we have uh, our main character Carolyn who I find to be one of the most interesting characters that I've read from recently she's just she's not likable she's very um she's very different than other characters in general and she just um, does things for her own um means it's really difficult to explain what it's about and I don't think I want to talk a lot about what it's about because I think some of the charm comes from not knowing what it is going into it but it's a blend of horror, fantasy, science fiction and urban fantasy type stuff into one mix <laughs> and um, it's extremely fast paced and yeah coming in as number one on this list uh, is Saul and Gabby Breaks the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. This is the most surprising book for me of all of them. I went into this because I had to read this for the Booktube SFF Awards. It was nominated in the middle grade category. And I have read Arusha and the End of Time, uh, which is by uh, Roshani Chakshi. And while that was a good story, it was just as if Rick Riordan had written a story with Hindu mythology where so I was afraid that all of the books in this regretted percents line would be the same thing but with this one it was just it caught it caught me completely off guard and it was just so amazingly written the characters are amazing I was went through all types of emotions I cried I laughed I I swooned and I did all of the things and I cannot wait to read the sequel I have already ordered it, it's on its way. I yeah, I don't want to say what it's about because I think again it's part of the charm is not knowing what it's about because it, it I'll just say that it follows our main character Sal who is able to do magic. He starts a new school and um, meets this girl called Gabby who is like this in an, in everyone's life kind of thing but she's helping other people out um, like uh, she helps like being a lawyer type person for people if they've done something they shouldn't have and they're in the principal's office or something she speaks their case that kind of person and um, they c they clash and they meet and they become friends and it's just really beautiful I loved it. Now we're going to the favorite book of the quarter of the year so far and that is um, 
Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a book that is inspired by Mayan mythology. It follows Cassiopeia who one day accidentally lets loose an ancient death god called Hunkame, who has a twin called Bukukame. I think his evil twin who has like put him there. And then it takes them into this journey of he has to go tr through some trials and they have to find a couple of things in order for Hunkame to get his full power back. And then we have this uh, really interesting character development with all of the characters and I just, I loved Sir Marino Garcia's writing and I think she might become one of my new favorite authors so I am definitely going to be checking out everything she's written so. And so yeah, those are the five favorite books that I've read over the past quarter. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book was this quarter and if you've read a new fi favorite of the year, a new favorite of all time. I'd like to know that. Have you read any of the books that I've been talking about today? Also let me know about that. And I will, yeah, um, my food is done. And um, I would also like to say if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Goodbye!